Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the second lecture of series of feedback amplifiers, which is the third module in analog electronic circuits. I'm Bhaskar, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, the SAB Institute of Technology. So, before we move on to the articles of today's discussion or the learning objectives, we'll try to recall the things that we discussed in the last class because recalling is always very important for us. Fine. So, in the very beginning, what is basically a feedback? We took an analogy as well to understand it and we got to know that feedback is something where you try to take the part of the output and feed it back to the input. Correct. And uh, later on, we also understood what are the two different types of feedback. One is called a positive feedback, other one is called a negative feedback. And then we wrote the general structure of a feedback and we tried to derive the expression for the closed loop gate here. We got it as A divided by 1 plus A beta. And later on, we also understood why do we have to use a negative feedback. Correct? What are the advantages of it? So, we got to, you know, uh, know that there are many multifold advantages of a negative feedback. Like the bandwidth increases, the gain gets stabilized, the input impedance increases, the output impedance reduces. And what else? The distortion is going to come down. It's basically a non-linear non distortion that we were talking about. And then, what else? The noise is also going to come down. And we also had the mat mathematical feel of all these advantages. We mathematically got to know that, yes, there are these advantages available as far as a negative feedback usage is concerned. Correct? So, these were all the things that we discussed in the last class. Now, we shall move on to the today's uh, discussion topics. Number one is topologies of feedback. We will we'll also be talking on the first two different types of topologies. One is uh, shunt series and shunt shunt feedback amplifiers. These are the learning objectives. Number one, what are the different feedback topologies that we have got? How do we identify the given topology as so and so or the given feedback amplifier as so and so topology? We will also get to know things on shunt series as well as the shunt shunt feedback amplifiers. So, before we get into the topologies, I think, you know, we must be in a position to get to know what are the basic types of amplifiers available. Anybody can name those? Probably we are very familiar with what is called as a voltage amplifier. And we always think that that is the only kind of amplifier available. But we are wrong. The first type is anyways a voltage amplifier. But other than this, we also have got something called as a current amplifier. Then, trans resistance amplifier. Probably we, none of us would have heard about this trans resistance amplifier and lastly the trans conductance amplifier now let's look into the you know simple block diagram of it like how this amplifier is going to look like a voltage amplifier is very simple to realize or to very simple to imagine we apply the input voltage and we expect an output voltage correct and the box which is connected between the input and output we call it as an amplifier we know how to represent the gain of it what is it it's basically av which is V0 divided by Vn, correct? It's V0 divided by Vn. So, in voltage amplifier, both the input and output quantities are voltages. And what we get as a gain is basically a voltage gain. Hence, it is called as a voltage amplifier. Okay? Now, let's see the current amplifier. How does it look like? A current amplifier is looking like this. Very, you know, obvious that both the input and output quantities must, must be a current quantity quantity. Why? Because finally the gain when I find, it should have only the current values, I0 by II. So, hence the name current amplifier. Then, we have got something called as a trans resistance amplifier. So, in trans resistance, how do we represent or write a resistance? Resistance is nothing but V by I. Correct. So, if I want to represent the gain of this block, which we are calling it as a trans resistance amplifier, we write it as V0 by II. So, the input will be a current quantity and the output will be a voltage quantity. Hence, it is called as a trans resistance amplifier. And lastly, we have got something called as a trans conductance, which is inverse of resistance. So, at the input you will have a voltage quantity and at the output you will have a current quantity. And the gain is I0 divided by Vi. Remember, in the last two amplifiers, we are using the word trans because we are trying to relate the output voltage or current by input current or voltage respectively. In the third case, trans resistance amplifier, output voltage versus the input current. Correct? 
output voltage versus input current. So two different quantities are taken, which are totally different voltage as well as the current. So hence the word trans comes in the picture here. So these are the basic four different types of amplifiers. Remember, when we try to arrive at the topologies, we are going to use these basic amplifiers and try to connect the amplifier, you know, the feedback network. So based on that, based on that, we are going to say that it is so and so topology. Okay. So it is these four basic amplifiers which plays a major role, but beyond it, we have negative amplifier which gives us the advantage. So what we'll do now is we'll quickly try to understand as to how we arrive at the topologies. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take a simple the structure that we used in the previous uh, you know lecture series. We have something called as a source. Then this gets applied to the amplifier. Let's call it as A, and then we get an output. I will not indicate the load here because it is very obvious that a load will always be there because we have to use it for some application, and then we get this feedback network. So, what will the feedback network consist of? It will consist of beta, correct? And then that goes back to the input side. So, the, from the basic definition, what what we say? A part of the output which is taken out from this point or I can use the word sampled, a part of the output is sampled and fed back to the input side and at the input side it gets what we call it as mixed up. So we can call this as mixer. So we have come you know, arrived at two different terminologies. Now one is called as a sampler, other one is called as a mixer. Let me call it as a sampler. A sampler. Okay. So what a sampler will do, it will take a part of the output and feed it back to the input side. It is going to take a part of the output. Feedback network will feed it back to the input side and mixer will mix it. In what way it is going to mix or in what way the sampling is taken or done, it depends on what quantity we are interested in. Okay. So let me look at the four different amplifiers that we have. The four different amplifiers, let me write down a voltage amplifier, a current amplifier, let me write this as amplifiers, amplifiers. Then what do you have? Trans, resistance amplifier and trans, conductance amplifier. So let me make a tabular column indicating what are all present at the input and output of it. So let us say this is input. Or let me start with an output because I first sample it and then mix it. First is output, second one is input. Why did I write like this? Because in feedback, first sampling comes in the picture and then gets mixed up. Without the sampled value, how can you mix anything? Correct. There cannot be anything in the feedback without sampling. So I am writing the output first. Okay. And remember, when I give the names to topologies, the same rule is followed. The first word comes from the output side, the second word comes from the input side. Okay. So let us write the input and output quantities that are available here quickly. Oh, fine. You are good to go down. So can you recall from the previous slide as to in case of voltage amplifier, what will be the output? I want a quick answer on this. Yeah, it is output voltage. And what will be the input? It will be a voltage again. Let me call it as Vn. Current amplifier. What will be the output? It will be a current quantity. And what will be the input? It will be a current quantity again. Trans resistance. It is very simple to remember. When I say resistance, you say V by I. And V is relevant to the output and I is relevant to the input in this case because it is an amplifier and we are defining the gain. So it will be V0 and In. Very simple to remember. Trans conductance is reverse of resistance. So it is I naught divided by Vn. I naught divided by Vn. Let me erase this and write the correct one. I naught divided by Vn. Oh. So I hope till here things are all very clear to you. I think we are going in the right way. This is output and this is Vn. Now, let us consider one kind of basic amplifier. Let us say it is a voltage amplifier. Let us say 
Now looking at this tabular column, one can obviously say what is the quantity that I am sampling at the output. It will be a voltage value. I want to ask you a very simple question. If I want to take a part of the output, what will I normally do? I will take it always across. Correct. Supposingly, if I have an output terminal, let us say this is a output terminal. We are considering a two port network. Here in the block diagram, even though we have written a single port, but normally all amplifiers are two port networks. So, I will consider a two port here. Two lines indicates two port network. Okay. So, this is where the output of the amplifier is coming. I want to take a part of the output. What will I do? Can I connect it in series? I can never do that. Voltages are always taken across. Correct. So, I will be trying to take it across this and feed it back to the input side like this. This goes to the feedback network. So, what I am trying to convince you people here is when I want to sample an output, I will always be taking it across. When I want to sample an output, I will always be taking it across. When I want to sample a current, I will take it in series. So, let me write that. All very basic things which all of us know, but I am trying to just put it in, in the right way here, that is all. So, when I want to sample, let me write it as sample here. When I want to sample a voltage, I will take it in shunt or parallel. Let me write it as shunt. When I want to sample a current, what will I do? I will connect it in series. Now, I want to mix up at the input side. Now, the voltage is being sampled and the feedback network will take it towards the input side. Now, what should I do at the input side? Remember, we are talking about a voltage amplifier and the quantity that has, that has to get into the amplifier is again a voltage. So, while mixing it, I should mix with the source signal. And when mixing happens as far as the voltage is concerned, remember, I cannot connect it in parallel. It will be nonsense if I connect it in parallel because two voltage sources connected in parallel will give you what we know. Correct? So, what will I do? What is that I am going to do? I will connect it in. Any good answer? In series. So, I will say as far as mixing is concerned, as far as mixing is concerned, let me write mixing here. Mixing voltage value will be what? Series. When it comes to current, I will have to connect it in shunt. If you remember or if you understand these two rules that are written here for sampling as well as mixing, then we are good to go with the topologies. We can understand or we can now list out the topologies that we have got as far as the feedback amplifier is concerned. Okay? Are we good to go? Can we move ahead now? Or do you really want me to write how actually the block diagram will look like? We shall see it. Don't worry. Once you are through with all these things, if you can recall and if you can remember and understand these points what I have told, then it is very easy for us to write the topologies and even understand it also. Okay. Now, I think it is good to good time for us to list out the topology. And the four topologies are shunt series, sh series and shunt, series, series, shunt and shunt. If you please recall the point that I told, the first word in the topology name or terminology indicates the indicates the sampling part. And the second word indicates the mixing part. So depending on whether you have a voltage or a current for a sampling, if you want to sample a voltage, how will you do it? You will shunt. If you want to mix the voltage, you will do it in series. Likewise, if you want to sample a current value, you will connect it in series. And if you want to mix the current value, you will connect it in shunt. So, please do not forget this. Okay? Please do not forget this. So, keeping that in mind, what is happening in a shunt series is, remember the basic amplifier, what is being used is a voltage amplifier. So, the first terminologies in all these four categories indicates the basic amplifier. It indicates the basic amplifier. And remember, finally, we can call it as still a voltage amplifier, but now it will contain 
the feedback part and what kind of feedback it will be this kind of feedback depending upon what kind of basic amplifier we have got so as far as the voltage amplifier is concerned we will have what kind of feedback it is called as a shunt series feedback why is it called as a shunt series because voltage is being sampled and voltage is again being mixed up at the input side coming to the next kind current amplifier what kind of feedback is being used it is called as a series shunt why is it called series shunt because the current sampling is happening and the current mixing is happening why do i say current sampling and current mixing because in case of current amplifier both the input and output parameters or quantities are current values so when you want to sample the current how will you do it you will take it you will tap it correct you will have it in series and even when you want to give it back to the input side as a feedback remember it's a negative feedback so you should bear this in your mind so if you want to have a negative feedback concept being applied there as far as the current value is concerned you have to shunt it in the sense you have to take it out of the source so if would come out of the source and later on it will continue as in so if part is getting eliminated from is and that is why it is shunt third kind of amplifier is basically a transconductance amplifier which is also called as a series series feedback why is it called as a series series transconductance will have what quantities as input and output it is conductance sampling what are we sampling we are sampling the current value so hence it is series and we have to mix the value what value are we mixing we are mixing the voltage value and again it is series hence the word series series comes into picture and lastly we have got what is called as a transconduct trans resistance amplifier what are the quantities that we see here in trans resistance it's the resistance value so it is v not and i n correct so we call it as shunt shunt why is it called shunt shunt voltage is getting sampled because at the output you have got voltage so it's getting sampled so it should be a shunt and the current is getting mixed so when the current gets mixed up it is again a shunt so this is how the four topologies will gets its its existence in the basic amplifier so depending on what kind of basic amplifier we have got we are going to choose or have so and so kind of feedback network and the names are given in this way i hope you are okay with this so the next slide what we have here is going to give you a much more elaborate or much more better understanding of the four different types now we shall try to name these because i have not indicated the name purposefully looking at these blocks we shall try to name those okay so let me use a different ink for that so probably a blue one a blue one so first we have a which is a basic voltage amplifier so in a voltage amplifier what you will have you will have the output voltage and you will have the input voltage vn and v not available so right here we will have what is called a vn v in plus and minus we will have even the output voltage right here this is where the output voltage is coming and we'll always take it across if you can see these two points we are taking it across correct so that is why the word shunt comes into picture so i can say shunt right here now how are we feeding it back remember we have a voltage quantity here so i should be using a voltage value here as well so everything should be in terms of voltage here so when i am feeding it back i'll be feeding the voltage value and how will i feed the voltage value it will be in series so the word series comes into picture and when i'm writing the terminology or giving a name for this kind of amplifier i'll take up the sampling part first and then the mixing part so what is the name that we give for it it is called as a shunt series amplifier or shunt series feedback or what kind of feedback amplifier this it is also called a voltage series feedback amplifier why is it called as a voltage series because shunt is nothing but it is relevant to voltage value and series is retained so these are all the different ways of you know giving names for the same amplifier of the block diagram so different authors would use different terminologies and we should be aware of all these things okay there is nothing to really get confused here 
if you are thorough with the concept if you know what is the basic amplifier doing what are all the quantities that it has got at the input and output side it is very easy for us to really identify the feedback topology okay so let's come to the next one which is b what is a basic amplifier being used it is a current amplifier what do we have at the input side it is i in what do we have at the output side it's basically i not so i want to sample the output current and you know when it comes to sampling the output we do it in series correct we do it in series now i want to feed it back remember at the input side of the amplifier i've, I've got the current quantity so everything should get converted to the current value or the current quantity so vs will now become is so we have converted a voltage source into a current source and you know how to do the conversion so current source comes in parallel with the resistance offered by the source so that becomes the source part now the feedback comes into picture and feedback should also be the current value correct if i want to mix the current you know what to do i should tap it so that when is gets in here a part of is should get lost so it means when in is written i'll be writing it as is minus of in which indicates it's a negative feedback got the point and how is the current feedback shown here it is in shunt so can you name this now club these two together that's all first comes the sampler part next comes the mixer part so i'll be calling it as what kind of amplifier it is called yes series shunt amplifier and what is the other name that we can give for it series is as good as what current correct you can also call it as a current shunt feedback amplifier but remember the basic amplifier will still be the current amplifier we can still call it as a current amplifier but with this kind of feedback clear how about the fourth third one c the basic amplifier is basically transconductance transconductance means it has got current at the output and voltage at the input now how will you sample the current value it is in series so i should use the word series we can see things are all connected in series correct things are all connected in series and it goes back input at the amplifier is a voltage so everything should be in terms of voltage so we have a voltage source back and we should feed the voltage back to the input but it should be a negative value so i feed it in series so this is basically a series so we can call this as what series series this is also called a current series amplifier or we can as well retain the name as transconductance amplifier but with this kind of feedback series series feedback okay lastly we have got this what is it a trans resistance amplifier what do we have at the output we have a voltage value what do we have at the input remember it is a resistance so output voltage versus the input current its output voltage by input current is what is trans resistance amplifier gain equation okay so if i want to sample the output you know what i have to do it's in shunt if i want to feed it back to the input again as the current value is there remember you can see the source has now been converted to a current source so you should have a shunt tapping so both are shunt so we can call this as what shunt shunt feedback or shunt is as good as what a voltage or it is also called or it is also called voltage okay this is the the topology understanding of the topology and this is how we really you know identify the topology i hope this has made you very clear as for us understanding the topology is a concept this is one more way of writing the same thing i have not you know done much changes in this but instead i have brought in these four things that's all to indicate what they are these dependent voltage or current sources have been brought here to indicate a much more better understanding or a much more insight into the different topologies that we have got probably i can explain one and tell you what is the meaning of it now this is what kind of amplifier this is a voltage amplifier this is a voltage amplifier and how would you define beta in case of voltage 
uh, amplifier it will have vf at the feedback part and at the input of the uh, feedback you will have v naught correct this is as good as writing it as vf equal to beta times of v naught and what is this this is nothing but vf and we are writing that vf as beta times of v naught so we are just indicating a dependent voltage source there so likewise you can do it for all the other three and understand what those current or voltage sources indicating there they are basically indicating the feedback quantity okay which is nothing but the amount of voltage or current that is getting in back to the input side in the out of phase uh, way okay so this is all about the topologies okay now we shall see few characteristic parameters of the first kind of amplifier which is a voltage amplifier with negative feedback remember in the objectives we had said that you know we are going to talk about two different types of feedback topologies correct i have taken it as a voltage amplifier with a negative feedback so what is the name that we are going to give for this it's basically called a shunt series feedback or it is in simple words called as voltage series feedback amplifier feedback amplifier okay now we are going to talk about this voltage series feedback amplifier and what and all are we going to talk about in this in this voltage series feedback amplifier we will be deriving the expression for the gain we will also derive the expression for the input impedance let me call it as zif we'll also be finding out the output impedance which i'll call it as zoa and let's see whether the gain reduces the input impedance increases and the output impedance reduces or not okay we shall look at these parameters and we can even derive the expression for the bandwidth and all other things but right now we are not interested in that part but we'll only worry about these three parameters just to get a confirmation that the amplifiers what kind of amplifier will give what kind of characteristic nature or will show up the characteristic nature okay so let's do it one by one before we do it now we should be writing the block diagram for it so i shall use the same block diagram which was you know shown earlier so there is an amplifier we have got the feedback block now at the input side you will see a source we will call it as vs let me also indicate the polarity for it we will indicate v in at the input side it does also have the polarity for it let me take out the signal from here let's call it as minus now at the output what we will have is again a voltage value so i shall indicate a load resistance right here i shall write it as rl what are we getting here we are getting v not value here now the feedback has to go the sampling will begin now so when you are doing the sampling we will take it this way and put it right here and this point will be taken and fed back to the input side now the voltage part of the voltage is getting back now at this point you will see the voltage getting fed back to the input side like this now what do you observe you will see the voltage vf getting fed back to the input side okay so look at the polarities that i have written here now we should have a confirmation that this is really the feedback is really providing a negative feedback or not but that what we'll do we we'll just try to apply kvl to this loop and try to see what kind of uh, you know what is the equation that i get for vn remember we should get vn as what it should be vs minus of vf this is when you say that there is a negative feedback effect because the actual input which is getting into the amplifier should get reduced correct so it should be lesser than the source voltage that is when you say that there is a feedback effect so when you apply kvl to it what will you get you will get vs minus vn minus vf equal to 0 which would imply vn is equal to vs minus vf and what you have got here and what is required are one and the same so hence this is basically a negative feedback okay 
Now let us try to derive an expression for uh, the, the, the gain. Okay, we'll derive the expression for the gain. So what I'll do for it, we will start. We will use the same block diagram, and we will try to derive it. What is the equation for the gain? A is what? A is equal to v not divided by v n. Can I also write it as v not divided by v s? Is it possible? Are these two quantities the same? If you look at this block diagram and say the answer is not correct because v s is different and v n is different because v s is what? V n plus v f. Correct. V n plus v f is what is v s. So v not by v n is not same as v not by v s. But this is true only when only when only when v f has become equal to zero. So initially there won't be any feedback at all. Why is that so? Because initially when you turn on the amplifier, there may not be any output at that instant of time. There may not be any output. So assuming that condition here, I can write a as v not by v n, which is equal to v not by v s. Now we shall see what is v n equal to. V n we know it is v s minus of v f. So what I'm going to do further is all kind of you know playing around with these equations and finally arriving at an expression for a f which is v not divided by v s. My point is that. Okay. So what I can write further, I can further write. Equation for v not. We know that. We know that. We know that. V not is equal to what? V not is equal to a times of v n. Because we have the equation right here. Fine. So I can write it as a times of v n. Further, I can write it as a times of what is v n? I'll bring this this equation here. So I shall write it as v s minus of v f or i can write this as a times of v s minus a times of v f now i should worry about the v f what is v f v f is nothing but beta times of v not and how did i get this equation i got this equation from beta which is nothing but v not divided by sorry v f divided by v not okay so i shall put that v f here so this would now imply v not is equal to a times of v s minus a times of what is v f v f it's nothing but beta times of v not slowly if you observe the you know step that i'm writing we are trying to have only the terms which contains or in the equation i should have only the terms like a beta and a f or things relevant to a f which is v not and v s slowly i'm you know you're not trying to eliminate the terms which are not required for me if we have got eliminated now correct v f is anyways retained v not is anyways there and i've got this a and beta coming into picture here so what i can write i can take this to the left hand side and say v not into 1 plus a beta is equal to a times of v s now it is very clear that it is very very clear that a f which is defined as v not by v s go back to your you know first uh, lecture series that we had discussed uh, about the basics basics of the feedback where we defined what is the closed loop gain a f it is nothing but this is equal to a divided by 1 plus a beta so it means we are able to get the same gain equation what we had defined there so all the negative feedback amplifiers irrespective of what topology are we talking about all the negative feedback amplifiers will have this kind of af equation a might differ because depending on what is the basic amplifier a would be v not by v n or it could be v not by uh, i not i n or it could be i not by v n or it could be i not by i n depending on the basic amplifier a equation would differ but otherwise a divided by 1 plus a beta the standard representation of af equation will remain as it is okay so the first part is over so we could able to find the gain now we shall move on to the next thing what is it it is input impedance input impedance how shall i find the input impedance now so to find the input impedance i'll have to tweak the block diagram that we had written that is 
this block diagram needs to be slightly tweaked so that I bring in the other parameters relevant to the amplifier. So I think you know you know you have uh, studied about the small signal model of an amplifier in the first module for BJTs and uh, you know FETs as well in the you know coming modules. So you know how to basically write or represent the small signal model of a amplifier or a transistor. So I shall use that concept here in deriving the expression for the input impedance. Okay. So how will I write it? Let me use a different ink for it. Let me use a black one. So the block diagram is written like this. So you will have a resistance of the input and what do you normally call this resistance as? If you are using a RE model, we would normally call it as a beta RE, correct? Which is the input resistance of the transistor in CE configuration. But otherwise, I will write it as RI. I will write it as RI. And what do you have at the output? You will have a you will have a dependent source. What kind of dependent source are you going to have now? You will have a dependent voltage source. Why did I use the word dependent voltage source? Because the input what you are feeding now is basically V in right here. And that is why you will have a dependent voltage source. So let me write the dependent voltage source this way. Even though the notation may differ, but I am more interested in this A times of V. So this entire thing what I have written here is indicating your amplifier part. Okay, is this point clear to all of you? So this is a small change what I am going to bring in. Otherwise, rest all will remain the same. You don't have to worry about any other thing. Rest everything is going to remain as it is. You don't have to really bother at all. So you write the rest of the things in the same way as if, as I wrote for the previous one. Even the beta factor will remain the same. So I shall take the output from here and feed it back to the input side. And at the input, you will have a voltage source. Plus minus Vs. This is plus minus Vn. Let me take this and connect it to the feedback path. That's it. Okay. So except the small change which I have written within the dotted box, everything else is retained as it is. Absolutely no change in it at all. And probably I can include one more thing here just to have the completeness a resistance which is indicated as R0. So this is as good as your you know small signal model that you've written for a simple transistor C E C C or C B configuration anything or it could even be relevant to the you know the FETs in FETs you don't see this RA because it's always open circuited but otherwise you can see a RG which is externally connected but right now these are all internal parameters of the amplifier. Okay, so what is going to be RIF in this case? RIF is the resistance that you look in from this point. Standing at this point, that is before the feedback, in the sense, you know, standing at nearing to the source and looking into the network, looking into the input terminals of the amplifier is what is RIL. So that is what is we are interested in now. So to find out this RIF, what is that I have to do? So let's begin with it. Let me write the current here as some I in. Remember the current will remain the same. Current will not change because everything is in series. So the current is going to remain the same. I in remains same everywhere. Whether you indicate it here, here or here, it remains the same. So what is the equation for I in that I can write? I n is equal to, yeah, any good guesswork? I n is equal to V n divided by V n divided by R. I have written it as R i, so let me retain it as R i. So when you are standing here at this point and when you look at the circuit or look into the circuit, what you see is only R i, correct? But when you stand here at this point and look into the network, it wouldn't remain as RI, but it will be RIF because the feedback also comes into picture there. Getting my point, all of you. So 
this I in that I have written here is right now considering this voltage and the resistance that is offered by the amplifier alone, which is R I. Now this can be further written as what? I can write it as V S minus V F divided by R I because I know what is V N equal to. Then I can write this as V S minus beta times of V naught divided by R I. Lastly, I can say that I N, this would only imply that I N is equal to V S minus beta times of what is V naught? There is nothing but A times of V N divided by R I. Okay. Now I should make some, you know, alterations or changes in this. I am slightly tweaking this equation that I have got here. I will write I n into R i is equal to V s minus A beta times of V n. I just brought this R i to the other side. Later on, I can finally say V s is equal to I n into R i plus A beta times of V n. Now, what is V in? You can see here, this equation says what is V in. So, I will write this as I in into R i plus A beta times of I in into R i. I have got I in into R i common, I can take it outside. I in into R i times of 1 plus A beta. So, further what I can do? I can write this equation as V s divided by I in which is equal to R i times of 1 plus A beta. So you get V s by I in. Now the question is what is V s by I in? Remember V in by I in we called it as V in by I in we called it as R i. This equation says R i is nothing but V in divided by I in. So that is standing at this point. You are looking into the network, standing at this point. But if I stand slightly behind and see, which also includes the feedback, what will be the uh, resistance offered by the network or the impedance offered by the network? It will be V s divided by I n because the source voltage now comes into picture. So including the source, if you try to see what is the resistance offered, what you will observe is this equation. So what is written here is basically R I F which is equal to R I into 1 plus A beta or in general you can say the impedance offered by the voltage amplifier the input impedance offered by the voltage amplifier with feedback is Z I F which is equal to Z I times of 1 plus A beta. Okay? So just to maintain the simplicity we took this Ri and RIF, but later on you can as well convert that to a impedance value. And the equations will all remain the same except that the notation has got changed. I hope this point is very clear to all of you. So, what do we conclude from this equation? We conclude that the input impedance, input impedance has increased by what amount? An amount of 1 plus A beta. Go back and check the equation that we had written earlier in the first lecture series where we said that the input impedance is going to get increased by an amount of 1 plus A beta and the same thing is happening even here also. Is this point clear to all of you? Yes, I hope so. Now what I will do, I will try to represent, we are interested in finding out the output impedance now. So let us say output impedance. Even though I am using the word impedance, but we are using resistances everywhere, but later on we can generalize it to the impedances. Okay, R becomes Z, that's all. So in the process of finding out output impedance, what are we doing? We will have to follow a procedure. The procedure is like this. If at all you are interested in finding out the impedance or the resistance in the output of a circuit, you will always nullify the input. Correct. If there is a voltage source, you will, you will make it zero. Correct. If there is a current source, you will open circuit it. Correct. So, there is a voltage source here. I am going to nullify it. I will set this value to zero. So, it means it is as good as shorted. It is as good as shorted. 
and I'll include a voltage source at the output and I'm calling it as V and the current which is derived because of this uh, voltage source is basically equal to I. Now what I'll do, I'll apply KVL to this loop. I'll apply KVL to this loop. What will I get? Applying KVL to the loop. Consisting of consisting of V R naught and A V in what will I get? You will get this as when you apply KVL, I'll straight away write the equation. V is equal to I times of R naught plus A times of V in. In the actual sense, you will get V minus you will have does V minus I into I no R naught minus A times of V in is equal to zero, and finally this is the equation what you get. So I'll have to you know make some changes in this. So what can I write? Uh, let me try to remove this V in. Somehow I need to eliminate that V in. So what will I do? I'll use the equation for V in. What is V in equal to? It is V S minus of V in. But we have used a small procedure here. What is that? V S has been set to zero. So I'll make this equal to zero. So you will have V in equal to minus of V in. So I can write this equation now as the further implication is I into R naught minus A times of V in. But VF is what? VF is what? VF is nothing but, let me write V is equal to I times of R naught minus A times of, what is VF now? In the normal circumstances, we are writing VF as what? Beta times of V naught, where V naught is the output. But right now, V naught is getting replaced by V. So this equation will be beta times of V. So I can write VF as beta times of V. So when you rearrange all these terms, what you will get? V into 1 plus A beta is equal to I into R naught. Remember, my interest is to find what is ROF. And if R naught is available here, ROF will be available after the feedback. So this is ROF. If you are standing at this point and look into the network, you will be able to see what is the resistance of the impedance offered by the amplifier considering the feedback. Because that is a point where the sampling is happening. So you stand after the sampling point and when you look back into the network, you see the resistance or the impedance reflecting that. And that is what is the output impedance. And how would you define this ROF? You can define it as V divided by I. So your job is to arrive at this V by I. So from this equation, it becomes so very clear to us that V by I is equal to R naught divided by 1 plus A B, which is equal to R by So this is the output impedance offered by a voltage series feedback amplifier or it is, it is a shunt series feedback. So in simple words, we can call it as a voltage amplifier with a negative feedback. Now, what is the conclusion you draw from this? The conclusion what we are able to draw is the output impedance. Yeah, the output impedance is it's reduced by an amount of by an amount of how much? One plus a beta. That is the conclusion what you draw. Okay. So the summary. What we can put is gain, and uh, we can also write ZOF as what Z naught divided by one plus A beta here. Okay, let's now summarize the voltage series. Summary of voltage series feedback amplifier. Summary is like this. We'll have the gain, we'll have the input impedance, we also have the output impedance. What is the gain equation? Gain equation is A divided by 1 plus A beta. When I say gain, I'm concentrating on AF value. What is ZIF? ZIF is ZI times of 1 plus A beta. 
And what is ZOF? It is Z0 divided by 1 plus A beta. This is the summary that we can have for a voltage series or also called as a shunt series feedback amplifier. Okay. Let's move on to the next kind of amplifier. And the next one is voltage shunt amplifier or it is called as a shunt shunt feedback amplifier. Okay. This is the block diagram which we have already seen. At the input side you have got a current source and you have to notice it. Okay. Because it is a voltage shunt. At the input side as far as mixing is concerned you are mixing the current value. So the source should be a current value. Okay. So now we shall try to find what is the impedance of it. Remember I do not have to really again find the gain of it because as I already stated in the previous uh, you know discussion that we had on the voltage series that all the amplifiers will have the gain as A divided by 1 plus A beta. So it holds good even for this also. You can give this a try. Okay, You just have to follow the same procedure what we followed for the previous one. You will be able to find what is the gain of it. Okay. Now coming to the input impedance. What is the input impedance offered by it? So let us see what is ZIF. Okay. So let me find. Say input impedance. How will I find the input impedance of it? So it is indicated as RIF. So input impedance RIF is defined as what? RIF is nothing but Vn divided by Is. You must be wondering where is that Vn. Vn is nothing but the voltage which drops at the input terminal. Okay. We shall see that. Finally, my idea is to find an equation for this. Vn divided by Is which gives me what is RIF equal to. So, I will use the same equation or the same definition of RIF in finding out or deriving the expression. So, I will say RIF is equal to Vn divided by Is which is equal to Vn divided by. Now, what is Is that I can write? You can apply the current formula here in the sense the KCL. Is is nothing but If plus In. So, Is is nothing but If plus In. So, I will write this as If plus In. Further, what I can do? I can write the expression for If as what? I can write If as, let me write that here, Vn divided by If is nothing but beta times of V0. So, I will write beta times of V0 plus In. I can still further make the changes here. What is it? I can divide both the numerator and denominator by in. Let us do it. So, when I divide both numerator and denominator by in, I will get it as Vn divided by in whole divided by 1 plus beta V0 divided by in. This is what I get. So, what is Vn by in? Vn by in, let me write Vn divided by in is nothing but Rn. It is nothing but Rn or Ri. It is this value. Okay. So, I can write this as Ri divided by 1 plus what is V0 by In? V0 by In is what? It is nothing but the gain of the amplifier because what kind of amplifier is this? If you go back and check, it is a voltage shunt amplifier. So, output has got the voltage value, input has got the current value, so it is V0 by In. That becomes the gain equation for it and that is nothing but A value. So, I can write this equation as 1 plus A beta. So, RIF, sorry this should be RIF is equal to Ri divided by 1 plus A beta. What is the conclusion you draw? The input impedance is the input impedance with feedback. Let me conclude it. The input impedance with feedback the input impedance with feedback is lesser compared to without feedback. 
without feedback. Okay, this is the conclusion. What we draw. Is this clear to all of you? Yes. Let's look at the output impedance calculation now. I already have the circuit with me. This is for output impedance. Output impedance. So when it comes to the output impedance calculation, what are we doing? We'll follow the same procedure what we followed in the previous uh, topology where we made the input voltage to set to zero value. Correct? Here I'm going to open circuit. Anyways, I'm going to make the value of IS equal to zero. So I'll say IS is made equal to zero and we'll connect a known voltage source at the output which is equal to V which provides an amount of current I to the circuit at the output. So what do we do next? We will try to derive the expression for what is called as ZIF. How do I define ZIF? Sorry, it is ZOF now. We are finding out the output impedance with feedback. So it is ZOF which is equal to what? Which is equal to V divided by I. Fine. So my idea is to find an equation to this V by I. So we will go ahead with it. So what do we do? As I have already told, IS is set to 0 and we have connected a known voltage source B. We can apply KVL to this loop and find the expression. So let's do it. So when I apply KVL, what will I get? I will get V is equal to AI or AN. We have written it as AN plus I times of R0. Correct? This is what I get. Further, I can also write this as V is equal to A times of. Now, when I am writing this I in, as already I s is set to 0, let us write the equation here. What is I s minus I f equal to is equal to I n. We have already set the value of I s equal to 0. So, what is going to happen to I n? It becomes minus I f. So, I n is basically equal to minus I f. So I shall use that minus IF plus I times of R0. So you can write this as minus AIF plus I times of R0. Okay. This is what you get. What next? But what is IF equal to? IF is nothing but? IF is nothing but? Beta times of V0. Correct? Because beta is what? IF divided by V0. So I can write IF as beta times of V0. So I can now say this V is equal to minus A times of beta V0 plus I times of R0. Okay. So I can write this as and what is V0? What is V0? V0 is nothing but V. So I can write this as beta V. So let me right here straight away as beta times of V, beta times of V plus I into R0. So what have we got? This would imply, this would imply further V plus A beta times of V is equal to I times of R0 or V divided by I is nothing but R0 divided by 1 plus A beta. Okay. So this is the equation for ROF that you get. So ROF is nothing but R0 divided by 1 plus A beta. And what is the conclusion you draw? The output resistance or output impedance. I can as well write this as ZOF which becomes Z0 divided by 1 plus A beta. The conclusion what we can draw from this is that the output impedance is lesser in amplifiers with feedback. Because it's very clear that ZOF is lesser than Z0. Okay. So we can summarize, we can summarize the voltation. So what is the summary? The summary what we can quote here is, as far as the gain is concerned, which is AF, as far as the input impedance is concerned, which is ZIF, 
and the output impedance is concerned which is zof you can say gain is af divided by a divided by it is a divided by 1 plus a beta and what is happening to zif it is nothing but zi divided by 1 plus a beta and zof is z not divided by 1 plus a beta so there is a point that we have to know gain is anyways fine but the input impedance has come down here and so is the case with the output impedance also if you try to compare this result with the previous uh, topology that we had discussed which is voltage series input impedance raised and the output impedance came down which was kind of a required characteristic for a good amplifier but in this case it is the other way around okay so with this i conclude the second topology which is the voltage shunt feedback amplifiers Thank you.